Hi, I'm Brian, and today we'll be looking at the paper P5, March-June 2017 question paper. We are now in question 1, requirement number 5, which you will find this over here. Assess the two reward schemes given in Appendix 2. So this video is about part 2 of uh, a two-part video for requirement number 5. You can watch part 1 um, in the little tab above on your top right. And uh, so let's take a look at the question requirement again. Assess. Now, when they say the word assess, it means you need to look at whatever is the question is talking about. There is some details which is given to you. And you would have to assess it based on some kind of model. Assess means you look at the strengths or weaknesses or advantages or disadvantages or things like that. Okay. Um, I have on my right side over here the approach, my approach to answering a P-level question, there's always five steps. You first need to assess the question. That means you take a very careful look at what's happening here. You find the relevant data in the question prompt, which might be up here or in the appendix. You will evaluate the data, look at what is given to you and think about it, draw from your knowledge, from your studies, and then finally, very important, answer the requirements of the question. Okay, so keep these five steps in mind when you do your final examinations. All right, let's go to do some background history on the question again. If you have watched my first video, you can skip this part. So where does it talk about the requirements which is leading to this question? So if we are looking at the P5 paper over here, you will find that the board has been discussing methods of analyzing and improving the reward system, which is, which is given at the top here. The, this part, result of scheme, 5% have received maximum bonus. It's only for the boss's favorite people, which is over here. It's not very good, so they are discussing it again. And we are also looking at Fitzgerald's and Moon's building block model. Now, they are specifically mentioned Fitzgerald's and Moon's building block model. So you should use that in your answer. However, if you decided not to, you will not be severely penalized for that because it's P5 paper. You can decide how you want to approach the question. They have specifically mentioned that there are two types of reward scheme which might be suited and they need an evaluation of their relative strengths and weaknesses over here. Okay, so let's take a look at the requirements of the two questions. The two uh, reward schemes, sorry. So we are here now in Appendix 2, which is over here. And we have already done Scheme 1 in Part 1 of this video. You can take a look at it uh, in another video. We are now going to focus on Scheme 2, which is a new scheme. So here I have my suggested answer for Scheme 2. And again, I'll be building my answer based on the three aspects of the building block model, which is clarity, controllability, and motivation. Okay? So let's take a look at clarity first of all. We'll be looking at the data here. Let's take a look at key elements from the question. So the first thing that you can notice over here is that employee targets are to be derived from the strategic indicators depending on the employee's area of responsibility. So that means now instead of like in scheme one, they say you have vague categories. Now the indicators are depending on strategic indicators. It means maybe profit or whatever has been decided by higher management. DS has listed quite a few. Senior management with the help of line management will cascade the indicators to the operational tactical level. So there's some collaboration between senior management and the line management now. There's a key point you need to take in mind. There will be five targets. So there's five. We're not sure whether that number is important or not. And you have senior and line management in consultation. That's a good thing. That means you have discussion between the strategic and the tactical people. Although, strangely, they did not involve the employee in the discussion. So that's something we need to talk about. 50% on top of their basic salary is a lot of bonus. So, yeah, 50% is a lot. So the, the, the value of the award should be sufficient to motivate. And you have 10 percentage points for each of the targets. So they've decided to have 5 and 10 percentile points. If you achieve all 5 maximum, you will get 50% of your basic salary. 
One issue we're going to look at later is the weightage. That means every indicator seems to have the same weight, 10 percentage points over here. All right, so let's take a look at our answer, first of all. So in clarity, you have these two items here. Indicators are cascaded down from senior management to satisfy strategic objectives, and the bonus scheme is easy to understand and quantify. So you have two, my answer has two main parts, clarity, uh, this one, indicators are cascaded down and bonus scheme is easy to understand and quantify. So this part is basically an observation of the question over here and I will now try to discuss it further with you. So with the help from line management, which makes them relevant to the employee's roles and level. See, when we set a strategic indicator, the top line management or strategic management may not really know how the activities of the employee lead to the strategic achievement of objectives. So if you involve the line management, which they have mentioned over here, line management is in consultation. So that will help make the, the strategic objectives or indicators more understandable, clearer to the employee, and hopefully that will increase their motivation. Secondly, there's more clarity on how the achievement of these indicators help strategic goals. Your employees will not feel, I'm wasting my time, I am not, I'm doing something useless. And they won't feel like that because the indicators have been cascaded from higher level management, come down to them, and they feel that they're part of the organization. Now, the bonus sim is quick, rather easy to understand and quantify. As you can see here, it's a very simple 50%, and then each one is 10 percentage points. That's quite good. Employees would be clear on how to earn their bonus. There are five indicators. Each one has 10 percentile points. Very easy to earn your bonus. It's not like some vague category where you need to convince the line manager that you're achieving something. Okay, so this is the part for clarity. We're now going to look at controllability. Controllability is whether the employee feels that he can do something to achieve that uh, requirement. Now, the selection of performance indicators is still selected by senior and line management. We are not sure whether these indicators are controllable because they were not involved in the discussion of the indicators. A better way would probably to involve the employees to propose their own indicators. This will help with the buy-in from the employees. You set, you, you know what the company is trying to do. You set your own indicators that helps the company in order to achieve what they're trying to do. So lastly, we have motivation. Motivation, we are going to break it into a few parts. First of all, that we need to highlight that it's a cash bonus based on salary. There are five indicators, which we're not sure whether that's a cons constant thing or consistent thing. Why they choose five? Why not two? Why not ten? You know, and the um, weightage of the indicators is the same. So I'm going to explain each one in turn. For the cash bonus based on salaries which have been selected. Now, cash may not motivate employees to think long term. We need to compare this to scheme one, and we also need to compare this to this paragraph over here where they say that the, the idea of employer share ownership has always been at the heart of DS remuneration schemes. So all this while, they like to give shares to their employees. But in this scenario, they have decided to change that and they're going to give cash. And cash is a short-term motivator, not a long-term one. So doesn't mean it won't be effective. It just means that management need to pay very careful attention that whatever indicators they, they choose, it needs to be designed for long-term thinking. This is the responsibility of management. The next one, cash is relevant and motivating for most employees. Everybody likes cash. They like to receive cash. And the amount offered is quite significant. So this is a lot of money. It's you could have 50% more salary and this would be a good reward. And uh, one benefit of offering cash is, is that it might re reduce the incidences of 
share price manipulation. So people might not do something weird on or funky on the stock market and try to manipulate the share price. Now we come to the issue of these five indicators. It seems as if this will be applied across the board. They're over here, five targets set by senior and line management. There's uh, no indication that it's going to be flexible. So the number of indicators may differ between roles. You, we might think that a higher level of uh, employee, maybe a line manager or even a, someone who, had, who runs a more complicated job or role, would require more indicators, while those at the operational level would require less. So we're not sure whether this five number is very good. Okay, and we're going to move on to the next one. The weightage of indicators is the same. Motivation may be affected as some indicators are easier to achieve than others. It's not fair well, on the employee's point of view that certain that all the indicators will have the same weight because some of them will be easier to achieve and some of them would be harder. And employees would feel that the harder the harder um, indicators should be weighted maybe higher or lower depending on uh, what they're trying to do. Pro probably lower, so because they're harder to achieve, so they should have a lower weight for them to earn more bonus. Weightage should be discussed between the line managers and employee. So we have assessed the current state, and this is a recommendation on maybe what should be done. So that is the conclusion of my analysis or assessment of the Scheme 2, which is offered in the question. In conclusion, Scheme 2 appears to have many strengths. There are quite a lot of strengths here, which makes it slightly better than Scheme 1. And, and they will, with better achievement of requirements of the building block model to further strategic objectives. That means using Scheme 2, we can try to push the employees in the direction that will achieve strategic objectives. This is not accomplished in Scheme 1, where you have these vague categories which they need to achieve. All right, so that is my answer over here. Do you need to write all of this? No, you don't need to. I've given my answer in bullet point form. Can you answer the question in bullet point form? You can, but I don't recommend it because you might lose out on certain professional marks. Um, and also, these answers, they are not written in full sentences. You will need to do that. But as a answer frame, this should be useful for you. Now, as always, you can download for free this answer from the about section below this video and uh, if you like this please like and subscribe um, thank you very much for watching i hope this helps with your question one of this paper thank you very much